Hi, in the next few videos I want to talk about atomic structure. To begin, let's look at nuclear notation. Nuclear notation is a convenient way for us to visualize the mass number, atomic number, and charge for any particular atom. Right in the center we have X, which is the chemical symbol. You can think of the chemical symbol as the code for an element. It's very intuitive for some atoms, such as C for carbon, N for nitrogen, but it's less so for other elements, such as Na for sodium. Now, you don't need to worry about making a whole bunch of flashcards right now for all the elements on the periodic table, and that's because the MCAT is not going to test all those random and obscure elements out there. Instead, the elements you're going to see on the MCAT are the ones you're used to seeing in your general chemistry and organic chemistry classes in college. So as you study from the MCAT, you're going to gradually familiarize yourself with all of the typical atoms that show up on the exam. Okay. So now let's look at Z, which is the atomic number. The atomic number is equal to the number of protons. Protons are located in the nucleus. They have a charge of plus one and a mass of approximately one atomic mass unit, or one AMU. Now, since the only other subatomic particle in the nucleus are neutrons, which have no charge, you can also think of the atomic number as being equal to the nuclear charge. Okay. Now, what's very important for the atomic number for the MCAT is that it uniquely identifies the element. What I mean by that is any atom with five protons has to be a nitrogen atom. And at the same time, any carbon atom has to have six protons. Okay, so now let's take a look at the mass number, A. The mass number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Neutrons, we mentioned earlier, are located in the nucleus. They have a charge of zero and a mass similar to protons, so approximately one AMU. Again, what's important for the MCAT is knowing about atoms called isotopes. Isotopes are atoms with the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons. So as an example, we can consider the different isotopes for hydrogen, where we can have protium, deuterium, and tritium. Now, you can see from the nuclear notation here that they have different mass numbers of one, two, and three. However, when you look at the number of protons in each of these isotopes, you're gonna see that they all have one proton, which makes sense because they're all hydrogen atoms after all. Now, if we take a look at the number of neutrons, we're gonna see that protium has zero neutrons, deuterium has one neutron, and tritium has two neutrons. So that explains the differences in the mass numbers. Okay. Finally, let's take a look at C, which stands for charge. The charge of an atom is equal to the number of protons minus the number of electrons. Electrons are not located in the nucleus. Instead, these subatomic particles orbit the nucleus. They have a charge of minus one and a negligible mass compared to protons and neutrons. So that's actually why we don't include electrons in our equation for the mass number. Now, when you calculate the charge for any particular atom, if you have a non-zero charge, you have what we call an ion. If your charge is positive, you have a cation. If your charge is negative, you have an anion. Okay, so let's go ahead and consider an example. So let's say we have a sodium cation, Na+, which has a charge of plus one. Since this is a sodium atom, you can look in the periodic table and see that it has to have 11 protons. And in order to have a charge of plus one, it must have one more proton than electrons, so it has 10 electrons. All right, so that's how nuclear notation works, but now I wanna talk a bit about the periodic table. And that's because on the MCAT, you will be given access to a periodic table. So if you click a button, the periodic table shows up, and you're going to see all of the cells that you're used to seeing, but the arrangement is slightly different from nuclear notation. Right in the center, you do have the chemical symbol. The atomic number is located on the top, right above the chemical symbol, and this value below, you often use it to do your stoichiometric calculations. But I wanna note that this value on the bottom is not the mass number. And that's because when you look at this value, you're gonna see that it's a decimal number. And the mass number cannot be a decimal value. It's equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. It has to be a whole number value because atoms can't have half a proton or a third of a neutron inside its nucleus. So 
what this value really is, is the atomic weight. And the atomic weight is able to have a decimal value because it's equal to the weighted average of the masses of the naturally occurring isotopes. So for example, we can consider an atom such as chlorine. So chlorine, you look on the periodic table, it's got an atomic number of 17 and an atomic weight of about 35.45. And where this value comes from is because for chlorine, 75% of chlorine in the world is chlorine 35, but 25% of chlorine in the world is chlorine 37. And when you take the weighted average of those masses, you do get that value of approximately 